Hey everyone, Shashank this side. I hope everybody is doing well and safe at home. As you can see on my screen, topic for today is AWS Cloud Shell. It's a command line access tool. It's a browser based tool within Amazon dashboard from where you can interact with different services provided by AWS. So this particular Cloud Shell is loaded with AWS CLI, PowerShell, Bash and SDKs. So you don't have to worry about configuring your AWS CLI or PowerShell or SDKs. It is preloaded tool provided by Amazon. I know like this is something Amazon has released in late 2020 because uh, this tool, if you, if you work with Google Cloud, so Google Cloud comes by default with, with this particular cloud cell itself. So I was waiting for this particular cloud shell environment from AWS and finally we have it's almost a year and quite stable for using the cloud shell environment to interact with different services. So the benefits of using cloud shell is like for example if you want to interact with your AWS services or resources with the help of CLI you have to configure the CLI first or the PowerShell or SDKs into your environment on your local laptop or onto your workspaces, VDI network or bash and host. You don't have to worry about doing all those stuff and once you log in with your IAM credential within your AWS dashboard, just open up this particular cloud shell terminal and you'll be able to interact with different services like secrets manager update creation, your insertion of files into your S3 bucket or if you want to reboot your EC2 instances, right? So the generic purpose, whatever we deal with AWS a lot in a day-to-day -day life. That's what Cloud Shell is all about, a terminal, a browser-based CLI for us. So we'll go through a few pointers that I have covered over here. And finally, we'll move to our practical demo. So as I said, it's a browser-based shell that makes it easy to securely manage, explore, interact with your AWS resources. So you don't have to worry about creating your uh, or configuring your environment with CLI or PowerShell or SDKs. Cloud Shell is pre-authenticated with your console credential, right? So whatever IAM user you are using to log into your environment, whether it is via SSO or a dedicated IAM credential, it is pre-authenticated with your console credential itself. Common development work, the operation tools are pre-installed. So no local installation, no local configuration is required. That's make our life much more easier as part of the AWS administrator or cloud architects. With the help of Cloud Shell, we can quickly run our scripts with the AWS CLI interface, experiment with AWS services, APIs, SDKs, PowerShell, or use the range of tool that you want to be productive with. You can also use Cloud Shell right from your browser at no additional cost. That's something I like a lot about AWS services. Most of the services are free for usage. It's just like whatever additional level of resources you are using, like hosting your environment into your EC2 instances or hosting your environment to your Lambda functions as a serverless architecture. You have to pay for that, but the service itself is free. We are not paying for services. So in short, this is one of a great tool, a great feature that AWS has implemented. And it, it was implemented somewhere in December 2020, somewhere around the reInvent time. And so almost a year, it's quite stable. I'm using it from uh, six last six or seven months for my multiple clients to interact with different resources within AWS. And it's doing pretty well. So that that's basically in short uh, about Cloud Shell. Let's move into our AWS Management Console and look at Cloud Shell. Okay, let me exit the slideshow. So that's my AWS Management Console. And if in the search bar, if you search for Cloud Shell, Cloud shell okay click on cloud shell so as of now i'm into frankfurt close it so as you can see it is loaded 
immediately for me. It takes a bit of time to load the backend uh, mechanism because it's running an Amazon Linux in backend, some kind of a containers which basically consist of somewhere around uh, two cores of CPU or I guess four gigs of RAM. So that's what it uh, it is running in the background and you can see it's directly giving me like try these commands AWS CLI for auto prompt or AWS command or AWS help. So these are the CLI commands. Now if I select the regions this is not available for all the regions as of now as you can see it's in Virginia, Ohio, Oregon Mumbai, Sydney, Tokyo, Frankfurt and Ireland. These are the only regions as of now what AWS has provided with the Cloud Shell environment. Okay, what all things you can do with Cloud Shell, right? So for example, since I, I updated you, this is preloaded with your AWS CLI, Bash or PowerShell, right? Or SDK. So we can directly run our commands. We don't have to do anything else because this is pre-authenticated with my console credential. So if you're admin, if you have only EC2 access, the level of access that you are getting, you can interact with the services of AWS. So for example, the famous example I would like to take, if you want to list out your S3 bucket, so let's do AWS. So for example, AWS hyphen hyphen version. Let's see the version of AWS CLI. So it's the latest, I guess, 2.215 Python 3.8.8. Linux 4.14 and all the stuff. So this is basically running with the latest version. I believe it's the latest version. I don't remember the exact version of the AWS CLI. Okay. Now, if you want to have the list of S3 bucket, then you can do AWS S3 LS. It will list down all the buckets into your account because S3 is global in terms of the namespace, but the buckets are regional as you can see. Um, I have multiple buckets in Asia Pack, then I have in Virginia, this is also in Virginia, and all those stuff, right? Apart from that, if you, let's say, if you want to uh, know what exactly this is running as part of the OS, so you can directly run cat etc os hyphen R-E-L-E-A release. Oh, sorry. My bad. It's a typo. So as you can see, it's running on Amazon Linux 2. Then uh, you, you can have all the detail of the Amazon Linux over here. Okay. For uh, if, if we talk about in terms of, let's say, how many number of posts are running with this. So we can do cat... Basically, that command is proc CPU info. Yep. So as you can see, this is running with two cores. That's first one. And it's Intel Xenon processor. So there are like a lot of different features available over this cloud shell. So whatever you are using, or doing with your AWS CLI, PowerShell, SDKs, you can do the same over here. Another important point to note is like the AWS Cloud Shell by default comes with one gigs of persistent storage per session, okay? Now, different services, different kind of structure, you can upload file over here, you can download file, how you can do that? So there is an, actions button over here now here like different options you can split into rows right or it will prepare another terminal for you or you can have the columns as well you can so somewhere around 10 sessions per region can be opened within aws cloud shell so you can parallelly operate multiple sessions for one region Right. For example, if I'm dealing with EC2 instances, I can run in one session. I want to deal with security group or network related issues or network related configuration. I can get that into another column or another row the same way different services in a different column. So it, it's kind of a multitasking approach over here. Okay. So 
that's that's all about basically how cloud shell looks like again uh, if you go to virginia so i'm into virginia there is so there are like two ways to open your cloud shell either you search over here in the search box go to the cloud shell or there is a button for the region supported if you see on uh, this particular side there is a button over here click on this cloud shell it will open up a new tab and it will try to prepare the environment as you can see the pre-installed tools are AWS CLI Python Node.js and many more one gigs of storage free per AWS region and you can upload save files into your home directory close it and it will try to prepare your environment in background now if you want to deal with PowerShell or bash within cloud shell to go into the powershell you have to do pwsh once you do pwsh you will go inside into the powershell over here okay as you can see ps home cloud shell user that's the directory now uh, the same command will be going to work over here so for example if i want to get the host version get hyphen host dot version it will give me the version and this comes with the latest version of powershell right i guess this is somewhere around 7 dot something i don't remember exactly but the major version is 7 revision as you can see the build number is 6 so i believe that's the latest one again i don't remember the exact version sorry for that but yeah you can do a lot of different stuff with the help of powershell now if i want to exit click on exit again i I'm back to my parent window and if I want to go into bash I have to use bash enter pwd that's that's basically what bash is right I'm into bash itself by default so that's one thing one thing to cover over here apart from that what else how to upload files so there are like options over here you can download files and you can upload as well you can restart the aws cloud shell session that takes time to restart so for example if i want to upload a file click on upload select a file and let's say i want to use this upload that's in screenshot it's getting uploaded okay it's under home cloud shell user okay so if i do ls i can see my screenshot is uploaded so file has been uploaded successfully now if you want to install any software so what you can do you can just do sudo go to the uh, power user okay sorry i'm into uh, power user so for example if i want to you do an yum update or if i want to install apache so i can do yum hyphen y install httpd so this will be going to install apache for me and here we go i'm done with installation of the apache right so that's how cool this particular tool is all about and you can play it around interact with multiple services within aws you can call it you don't have to authenticate or re-authenticate i would say what we do with the aws cli or powershell where we have to conf do a configure aws configure give the access key and secret key these are like pre-authenticated as i said with the with the help of your console user itself the console iam user so that's it guys for this particular video i hope this helps a lot in terms of the concept the challenges that uh, was there with aws cli powershell i'm not denying a fact you don't use that particular thing but if we are getting a feature on a browser-based scenario then why can't we use this interacting with different services although the regions all are not available for every region if you're operating in a different region which doesn't have cloud shell obviously you have to go back to your traditional method but one by one aws is releasing this particular feature in all the regions and finally will be going to get all regions supported by this cloud shell so just play it around this is one of our coolest features 
that what we have in the cloud world you, this feature is also available in your gcp play it around place out a comment in the comment box if you're facing an issue and do share your experience with aws cloud shell as well thanks a lot guys have a nice day bye bye